guess. <clears throat> I have been trying to forge a typewritten document. I've spent the last couple of days trying to get typewriter ink off of a page cleanly in a way that it can be reapplied. I'm not trying to forge anything specific, but it seems unusual to me that ink is so indelible, right? Um, I'm not going to worry too much about the typewriter because I only, I mean, I have a number, my, I have access to a number of typewriters, but I only have the one, so I'm not going to worry about like matching it or whatever. But what I'm going to do is I have a piece of paper that has some letterhead on it and a signature that I'm going to sign in pen. And then what I want to do is remove the text that I've typed and then type different text. In my tests, I have had some success with mechanically scraping um, the paper clean. That actually looks really good. Uh, and I'll show you a, a, a video of it here. Um, it's just really time consuming and I'm not sure if it's going to work. So I have um, a couple of different mechanical things that I still haven't done yet. Now they sell typewriter erasers, right? And also with a regular, just standard um, pencil eraser, you can erase typewriter words sort of up to a certain point, not completely, right? First of all, let's talk, talk chemical solvents, right? I tried soaking it in alcohol, it didn't work. I tried soaking it in water and the paper dissolved before the ink did. Another thing that's really annoying is that on all the boxes of typewriter ribbons I have, which is to say one, it doesn't say what kind of thing it has in it, which I'm going to assume it's India ink, which means that it's actually just carbon, which would explain why I can erase it. Um, but it doesn't explain why it only erases to a certain point. My thought is that it binds with the paper somehow, um, which leads to uh, my thought of having to scrape the paper away being the only way to do it. Um, I tried nail polish remover, but um, I just painted my nails and I was a little scared to really go into it. And it also didn't seem to make that much difference versus the alcohol versus the uh, acetone and water just totally destroyed the paper because that's how paper is made. It's, it's mushed up in water and then um, it's, it's, you know, cut up into little strings and then put in water and then squished flat. Um, and it's, 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 it's crazy, a typewriter ribbon. It's driving me crazy because it's a piece of, of ribbon that has, it's, it's imbued with ink, but the ink never dries out. Um, how, you know? I mean, it does dry out eventually, but like how, you know? Um, I really, I just don't know. Um, if it's essentially just carbon, then it would never need to be wet, I guess, because it would just be the pressure of, this is me thinking it through right here, live on TV, uh, the pressure of the hammer drives the carbon into the paper and it, it, I don't know, it synthesizes somehow, um, which means you can only erase it up to a certain point. I also had the thought that it would be a uh, uh, heat-based uh, ink, because I've heard of ink, uh, heat based ink. Um, so I lit a piece of paper on fire and the ink was still there. Um, don't, you know, I'm not going to show the video of that because I already did it and I'm scared to do it again. Um, but I also found out that heat based ink is actually just rubber cement, <laughs> which doesn't make a goddamn lick of sense to me. All right, this is my second round of testing. And it has uh, reinforced my first round of testing, which is good. Um, I found out a couple of things. One, I'm way out of the game on making YouTube videos because I forgot to press record a couple of times. And two, uh, these different solutions take different times to dry, which I guess I knew, but I need to remember to keep in mind. Anyway. The water one's not perfectly dry, but I also learned a couple of other important things. One, if you're going to be testing the removal of ink from something, 
it's probably useful to put the thing that you're removing the ink from on an inclined surface so that the ink has somewhere to go. But you can tell from the bleed which ones would have worked given enough, you know, time. I also learned that sometimes you have to tear a piece of paper in half so that it'll fit in your dish. So on the rubbing alcohol, clearly the ballpoint pen is alcohol based. It's the only one that faded that much. Even the fountain pen, which is really weak, it only faded a little bit. Now on acetone, they didn't do anything to any of them except ballpoint here. Water really did a number on a fountain pen, but ballpoint and Sharpie were fine, which I thought was, was interesting. Sharpie has been consistently fine this whole time, which leads me to wonder what it's made out of, but I've gotten Sharpie marker off of things by rubbing it with alcohol. Um, but I don't think I can do that here. And an interesting point here is that nowhere does the typewritten text look different than when it's just normal, right? Like color wise, these are all the same. Uh, these, this will be the same. Also alcohol and acetone didn't affect the paper very much. It made it a little crinklier, but um, water, and I know from experience with putting paper in water, it just totally destroys the paper. So anyway, none of these worked for my purposes because the typewriter ink is still on there. Um, um, this is a piece of <laughs> 220 grit sandpaper, which is probably way too gritty for this sort of thing, but it's all I have. Now here's one problem I have run into with this. Um, it works great for removing the words, but it changes the tooth of the paper and, can you see that? Oh no, you can't. Like it changes the tooth of it, but also you can see right through the places where I've sanded it. However, it does remove the words pretty well. Um, I feel like this is going to be a recurring problem because the only way I can figure out how to get this ink off of the paper is by removing a thin layer of paper from the top, um, which means that I'm going to end up compromising the materiality of the paper. Um, now we're gonna try this last one where I'm gonna try and take it off with an X-Acto knife. Still, you get that tooth problem, and it might be that my piece is just too small, but it's really, oh, it's really patchy. Like, I feel like if I spent a little bit more time on it, the knife, the knife uh, system has some potential, but sandpaper seems easier. I'm gonna go see if we have a finer grit sandpaper somewhere. All right, well, 220 was the smoothest that I could find. So short of just rubbing one piece of paper on another one, I think it's time to make the document with the text that I'm gonna replace. From the desk of Jacob David Earl. Hello. Regarding your recent correspondence on the evening of the 15th of March, I am responding to your request to join me and my company in a rousing game of cribbage in my parlor around noon. I always enjoy your presence and that of your family, and it is, of course, most welcome in these unusual times. How, furthermore, as long as you refrain from singing, carousing, or bringing that odious and offensive cousin of yours into my pristine home, my door is always open to you and yours. I am free from work on nights and weekends, except in May and on days ending in Y. Otherwise, I would be most excited to arrange a date for your game at my house per your request. Yours conditionally, J. Fake Name. a lot of particulate in the air so I'm going to keep this on for a second however here is the problem it's worked just about as well as I thought it was going to but you can definitely see right through it <laughs> that's hilarious 
Also, there's a small hole right here that I've generated. But considering it's my first try, and this is the world's thinnest paper, it's a little concerning how well it worked. Ugh. All right, is this method a success? No, I would say not strictly. Um, I've almost entirely compromised the paper and you can still see some uh, residues of the letters if you look closely. And there's this little hole that I made. <laughs> like, can you see that? Sometimes there's little, you can sort of see the faintest little bit of a line. But I love this perfect little hole that I made. Um, and for my purpose of forging a document to get a fictional person hired at a manor house or whatever, I think that it wouldn't succeed. But as an interesting, is there some reason Servo AF isn't turned on? But as an interesting, like, object, like art object that I've made today, I think that it's good. I think that all I have to do is think of what I'm going to type over this. There should be a second part to it. From the desk of Jacob Roll. Hello. The bearer of this letter is both honorable and honest, and they have my highest level of trust and confidence. Hand over to them immediately all of my savings and holdings, as they are my agent in those matters, and I have entrusted them with the deliverance of my monies here, too. Once they have completed their business, I have assigned them. I encourage you to hire them on at some kind of household position, as they are most, both most capable and one of my most trusted confidants. If these duties are not completed to my liking and satisfaction, I'll be forced to pursue legal action. Yours conditionally, J. Fake name. Now, I've covered up, I've typed all through the section where uh, I typed in the original letter. I filled it up with, uh, I tried to type as much as possible. However, if you look, you can still see that is, I have quite badly degraded the paper uh, in a way that, you know, may be suitable for um, creating a false uh, galaxy, even, of little pockmarks and stars of sanding it with such rough paper. I think that if I were to do this a second time, I would do it with probably thinner or, um, you know, better sandpaper. And I would also potentially sand the entire paper, degrading it evenly so that you can't see the so it doesn't look like I just sanded just the text part um anyway that's the end